Good morning. Hello. Every morning, um, well, not every morning, but often I will pull a oracle card or tarot card before things like this because it just like gets me all jazzed up. And um, I pulled one today and I'm like, oh, we need to talk about it. But I don't want to talk about that first. Let's, I want to find out like, how do you feel about your Black Friday? I'm super excited about it. You know, it's um, so I do like a five deals in five days. That's my um, that's my strategy for Black Friday. And it's the second year that I'm doing it. And I find it to be really fun. Like, I think that some some people have the icks about Black Friday. I personally don't like I feel like I'm primed to buy that time of year. Mm -hmm. Everybody's primed to buy. And when we offer really juicy sales, I feel like people are they're ready to eat it up. So I'm sorry. I really How about you? Yeah, you got me all excited. So I had done a Black Friday before my accident that was really successful. I am not sure, but I kind of feel like I did one last year or two years ago. Can't really tell. But then this year I was like, I'm going to do another one because I really like it. And I come from um, corporate America background. So Black Friday is always liquidating stuff so that when you have to do inventory, you're in the black right? Like, so you're not like struggling to um, pay off that. But I loved the five day, um, five different offers concept. And I love the 24 hour thing. I am not one to like leave an offer out there lingering. So I was really excited about it. And everyone, like if you don't have a business bestie, find one. Like that's what Ankara Rose and I are like, we bounce ideas off of each other and support each other. And I think it's really important. So um, like she enhanced the idea, even with the other cosmic warriors and E10X to create a, an offer. And like you, like when I would have little offers like this, I would clean up. Yeah. And like, you know what I think is so fun about this idea? So just for everyone listening to be a little more explicit, it's five deals for five days and every deal is only live for 24 hours, right? So you have a built-in urgency, right? There's a time limit. So there's a little bit of like, oh, I got to snag the deal. Um, and But what I really love about it is Yes, you get to throw in things that are already done. Maybe something that's like in your catalog, you haven't sold, you just haven't had any energy to sell it. It's maybe not even like what you're focused on in your business now, but it's still a valuable product. Since you already made it, you can give it and a great mm -hmm. discount. And it's such a good deal for people, but also it's a great place to pre-sell and test out offers that you know you wanna do and you can get a few of those spots filled ahead of time. I love it. I I'm love digging it. this. So yeah. one of the things that I noticed, so I went ahead and made my sales page, the rough draft of it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go back and like tweak the names because I'm loving, even though I don't identify as a witch, we all are witchy, but um, I'm loving the lingo. And I, I was loving, like, I want to call instead of like what you get, maybe like, um, ingredients for the spell or something. I don't know. Yes. I'm taking the witchy thing into November. But one of the things that I noticed, I put all my rough draft up there and there's that one you saw like that high ticket offer for my one-on-ones because I normally don't become public with them. But what I realized is I want everything under 1K. Mm -hmm. And I have like my confidence hypnosis for like, I think it's 27 or $47 and you get it for as long as you want, right? I love that I can recycle cash codex. Girl, people bought been that. been talking about it for so long and like, right? it's awesome. I know. And what I realized is that people were coming into my group and I have specific questions, right? And one of the questions is like, where do you think your gap is? And there are people in my group that still believe that they need the strategy first and they might be right. And so I'm like, well, this will be good for them. And it gives me the opportunity, like people have paid a lot of money for it and now I can do it for $9.97. Also, I decided no payment plans, everything's painful. 
Yeah. So I think I'm, I have one, only the higher ticket. So I've got like a, I do like an off, uh, I call it the offer accelerator where it's like a two month intensive to craft out someone's offer. And that's a little bit of a higher ticket. So I am offering payment plan with that. But I think in general, just like, just pay it. It's reasonable. Just do it. You know, and my thing, I'm going to be straight up. I'm going to challenge you here. Okay. Um, even with my, when I put my high ticket up there for working with me, because normally it's 18 K for three months. Yeah. Uh, even when I was going to offer that with a discount for, I think like very limited to like three people, mm -hmm. it was still paying full. Ooh. Okay. Think I, about it. Okay. I like telling on myself it's like i am somebody who first of all if i can pay in full i love to pay in full i don't like recurring payments that i have to do that's just me even if i have the money coming in i like to just pay and get it done but i definitely have it made up in my mind which now i'm being challenged this idea that like it's like i want to make it easier for people which you know i think there's value to that too right like i completely accessibility. Agree. but i will tell you it like in every single program I've ever run, even low, like things that were not high ticket that I've offered payment plans, I am not chasing people, but like there's a problem with the payment processor. There's a, there's a missed payment. There's a this, there's a that. It takes a lot of energy to do it. I used to think, well, if you're going to do a payment plan, why would you charge more? But you're charging more because it's more work. Yes. Even if it's automated because oh my God. Go I learned the I'm hard going through way. Stripe and I'm like, well, I don't know what this is. Did it go through? Did it not? I know. It's crazy. Yeah. And I learned the hard way that like $27 or $97 reoccurring payments, people have more challenges coming to the table. I spent more time chasing payments for people in that tax, in that bracket, that income bracket. Yeah. Um, what is the price of that one that you're offering payment plans for? It's 2400 paying full girl paying full. Okay. I'm gonna Here's the there. concept that I have when I was doing mine. Yeah. When people go to target or Best Buy or wherever they're going that day, are they planning on a, there are places that do layaway, but most people yeah are going in and they are planning for it. It's true. And you're giving them the preview. You have the page. So yeah. they will see which ones they want. And if that's the one they want, then they can plan for it. They have a month to plan for it. Yeah. And I will say like, PS, it can be really helpful. If you already have the sales page built out for that product, you can link that in your, so what we do is we create a single sales page with all of the offers and the button link will only be live for that 24 hours for that button. And then the button closes down and then the next one starts up the next 24 hours. But if you do have a, a sales page so they can even get like a deeper preview and get even more excitement, you're not building a sales page for all these now. But if right. you had one, you can link it. Not I got it. rid of all my sales pages for cash codex and stuff. And I'm like, who cares? Yeah. Like yeah, people yeah. that trust me, they're going to be the ones that are buying it. And they have li lifetime access, whatever that means. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love it. I'm so excited about it. I'm uh, I'm excited to launch it. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's fun work. It's fun. As I always say, when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's true. It's effort, not work. Like there's, there you a, go. there's a little bit of like a a tweak for myself. It's like okay, I never think like, oh my god, this is so hard. I do think like it's a lot of tasks, but. Yeah. I know the benefit is I get to do what I'm so passionate about, what I love so much, and it impacts people's lives in a positive way. What and, an honor. Right. Okay, I can put last, some effort into it. Fine. Right. And last year you <laughs> said that you made 5K off of it. Yeah, I made 5K last year and I'm like, I didn't have a particularly uh, engaged audience. My list had a thousand less people last year. Right. It's, it's how this is. Good. And I don't have any attachments to it either. Right. Because I feel like everything that I create for this year, next year, I'm just going to tweak it. I can offer the same exact things next exactly. year. You know, like your audience will be bigger. Yeah. You'll have new people looking at it. There's going to yeah. be people that are like, oh, I missed it last year. I want to do it this year. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, are you like when we were on the E10X call this week, and I was thinking about this this morning Mm -hmm. when, um, one of the warriors said, you know, your group's so big. And I'm like, it's not about, and what's big, right? Like I see those groups of 70 K and I'm like, no, thank you. Like (laughs) that. I can't deal in that energy. It's just like going to a, you know, a NFL game or something. I don't want to do it. I don't want to go. Like, I don't like crowds in real life and I don't like crowds in virtual life, Mm. but it's not about the crowd. It's about the quality, right? Like it's not about the number of people. The engagement, are people there so they can just promote their own stuff? Are they really there for the purpose of the group, which depending on the purpose of the group, is it like encouraging people, support, you know, exploring things together? Uh, Once you have a group that's above a certain size, you're also paying somebody to manage it, Mm -hmm. right? So like there are other pieces that kind of come into play, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, that's why like it doesn't take a lot of people to mm-hmm. in a community to make a lot of money no no it takes the right people it takes mm-hmm. people who are engaged and ready um you know one of my one of my very very favorite mentors you know she always says she made her first like multi six with like or one hundred fifty thousand, or maybe 200 something like that with like 700 followers right it's not this ten thousand follower thing and and i have to say like it depends, right? But the kind of, mm, okay, if we're talking social media and we're talking social media following, right? Because this is all related in the groups or just followers, right? The kind of content that you put out is actually going to determine the kind of, uh, I would say like, what kind of a buyer you have in your audience. So if you're giving a lot of educational content out, people will consume it, but that doesn't actually motivate people to buy. So you know, I've been going back and forth about how I want to approach my social media. You and I have, we've talked yeah. about this. I'm, I'm not, I don't love being on social media and it will be a part of my business, but I don't, I, this is something I am going to um, hire out. It would be very easy. And I would get a lot of people if I just put out informational posts about the success codex, it would, it would bring a lot of people in, but not necessarily people who are my ideal clients, not necessarily people who are ready to buy. So the rule of thumb is 90% inspirational, 10% informational. Mm. So inspire them, give them the transformation, you know, and we've talked about this before, like uh, one of my coaches made his first, first multi figure, uh, six figure business. He wasn't even on social media. Yeah. I mean, you made, so, you, you're. Most I didn't build my practice on right. social media. Right. Like it's this concept that, but now that I want to help online entrepreneurs, it's yeah. important for me to be online, right? And course creators and stuff or entrepreneurs that find me there. But yeah, like this concept that we have to be online. It's ridiculous. Like the internet hasn't always existed. It hasn't. And I do think there's like, there is some correlation to like, if you're teaching online, showing up online in some way, shape or form makes sense. So people get a sense of who you are, they get to see what it's like, they get to hear you, they get to feel your energy. Um, but it, I think it's, it's an unconscious agreement that many of us have made, myself included, I'm currently unraveling it, that the only way to make money is to show up on social media and post multiple times a day and like be online. Yeah. My whole life online. And the big, I want to say like the big aha for me was that as I've been doing my M of M and I'm projecting and, and (laughs) sensing myself in my really most actualized, healthiest, happiest, most successful version, future version of myself. I'm not on social media all day. Mm -mm. So why would I build a business doing things that ultimately I don't want to be doing later? Yeah, I am like the rule of thumb is until you hit your first 250K, you're the only person in your business, right? Mm. Like that's the rule of thumb. Yeah. Um, But 
if ever I get like a, oh, I want to post that, I just go on to Facebook and then I schedule it in. You're I'm just so, like, I'll schedule so that for Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. I don't. And if I double stuff up, I don't care. I'm just like, I'll guess. I'll guess what I need to post it. Yeah. So I have stuff that's probably, I don't even look at that account most of the time. Yeah. Um, but I do, like we've talked about, use it for like a journal for myself many yeah. times, like one post a day. Oh, well, not even one post a day, but you know, but I'll just be like that though. When you're inspired, you just post. And I, yeah. I love that. I think that that's how I was until I hired a coach that hated Facebook. So I like, I just blend into all, I meld my coaches, right? And it gives me a lot of experience, um, but it's not always me. And I had a coach that was, you know, she just hated Facebook and she loved Instagram. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make the switch. The problem that I have with Instagram is it, it, it doesn't have to be, but I think it tends to be more of like a curated visual thing. And I love creating graphics, but it is a rabbit hole for me. Mm. So it ends up being more about making it look pretty and just saying what I want. Before I switched to Instagram, I would do a live all the time on my Facebook. I, I actually, I prefer Facebook. I don't like being on my feed, but if I'm going to engage like in my group, I have a free group. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. You know what I'm thinking? I'm just going to blurt this for yeah. some accountability. Thanks, friends. Um, <laughs> there's there's an Instagram uh, strategy called the nine. It's the nine grid strategy. Yeah. And so you tell a story with the top nine posts that you have, and then you just leave them there. It's actually like each, you know, each square has its own little thing, a little bit of a story. You're promoting something. I think I'm just going to leave Instagram like that. And then I'm going to come back to Facebook and see how that feels. The only thing, so I've been like linking them yes. and I was like, oh, I'm going to make my fa my Instagram look pretty. And I'm going to have like two of these reels and then one placard or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, it, that didn't last. Uh, <laughs> it's already messed up. But at yeah. the same time, yeah. like, here's the thing that I think about. I, there are people that I watch on Instagram that I found on TikTok originally. And mm. there's a really famous woman that I can't think of her name right now, Elise Myers. Okay. And she's not an entrepreneur. She's not an online entrepreneur, but she is an entrepreneur and she's a, I think a graphic designer or something mm. like that. Mm. But she has a huge following. She did on on TikTok, she had like millions and millions and it created so much stress and anxiety and overwhelm that she just closed her account. And now she's only on Instagram, wow. but I'll see her stories and they're really personal about her and her son and her marriage and like different things. And they're not curated and they're not fantastical. They're real and in person and the feedback. And I think that people... I've heard this come from your mouth before. I'm tired of being sold to. Yes. So what if it is just being real about I fucking hate being sold to? Yeah. Yeah. Like what if your clients are also sick of being sold to? How can you oh, yeah. ooh, like create this? And this is something that I'm going through because of the work you have done with me. Thinking of, I've always fucking hated the 10K month, six figure year. I made a million dollars my fourth year in business. I'm na, 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 like that whole freaking money. I've always hated that approach to selling mm. because it's selling, right? And yeah. this conception of selling. But now I'm like, how can I talk about money without actually talking about money? And yeah. how can I be real and compassionate and help people understand that it doesn't happen overnight? And what the fuck is wrong with 250000 a year? What is wrong I with $300,000 a year? It's so true. You know what's so weird is all of a sudden Instagram and Facebook are constantly showing me uh, seven figure uh, like posts and like all of a sudden it's like i don't know if it like 
got wind of my your phone <laughs> heard, and it's just heard like, us. No, you want to go here? <laughs> it's just like you oh, know. I don't want to. I don't. Are yeah. always listening to they us, are. and we have these conversations. <laughs> I've true. noticed the. I've noticed them changing. It's true. It's true. I I honestly think no, not for everybody, right? We're all being bombarded with whatever we've been feeding our social media, right? So if it's cat videos, you're being bombarded with cat videos. If it's entre if you're an entrepreneur, you are being bombarded with other probably entrepreneurs, the people who you look at, the people who you follow, and the, and the the algorithm will give you more of that. But I get, I get the way sales psychology works. I get the marketing. I understand it, right? You point out what someone's doing wrong. You point out their mistake mm -hmm. and you let them know that you're the one and your mm -hmm. offer, not you, but your offer mm -hmm. is that's the vehicle that's going to get them there, right? However, to be smashed in the face with that message again and again and again, because what's the undercurrent of it? You're doing it wrong, right? So subconsciously you're scrolling but i'm sure you know more about the subconscious than i do you are receiving the message that is being reinforced again and again and again well, you're not enough there. you don't know how to do it you need to pay someone else to figure it out there's That's a missing what... piece you got to find that missing piece and i have that missing piece it's taking people's personal power away from them yes it's, and this is the thing like i think about this I believe that we moved into the age of Aquarius. Everything is changing. People are seeing clearly what it is that is wrong. And this in is including how we're being marketed to and the strategies in which we have used for decades, if not centuries, has been a misogynistic men designed yep. um, strategy for selling. Yep. And I think it was you that were saying Maybe not, but men are initially competitive and women. No, this was, this was a study that Ruth was sharing that mm -hmm. men are naturally competitive and women are naturally nurturing. Mm. Okay. So um, when we look at that male dominated, like misogynistic sales method, they're competing with other people and saying, no, 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 no. It's me. It's me. It's me. It's my method. It's my method over here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. And I think women, now that we have, we're in the age of Aquarius and we are also like, you know, I, I don't know a lot about it, but we've moved into the divine feminine and all that. Mm -hmm. um, we're sick and fucking tired of being sold to in a way that is not in alignment to that in which we desire. And I think it's all changed. It feels gross. It feels gross. It just feels gross. I can't even see like on Amazon Prime if we're watching a movie and something comes up like, uh, you know, Target or whatever. I'm like, no wonder they're changing their marketing. No wonder all these corporations. Mm. Starbucks is having their second quarter of extreme loss. One, because of their thing against Palestine and everyone boycotted them, but everything they're doing is not working. And I'm like, well, look who the CEO is. Mm. Like mm -hmm. it's all greed and corrupt, but I'm, I look at these things and I see these commercials when they pop up on Amazon prime and I'm like, ick. Yep. Yep. I don't want to be that person. Plus I don't want people to think that I'm the solution. I want them to understand they're the solution. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. You know what's coming up for me as you're saying this? It's like, I think for me, I've conflated a little bit this idea of like, you know, first of all, I really do see myself in this like matriarchal role with the success codex, right? Like mm -hmm. I see myself the way a mother would want her children to be more successful than she is. I want all of the people who are in my reader training to be more successful than I am. I want everyone who gets this, right. you know, I really genuinely want that. But in my maybe conditioning or whatever it is, I've, I've been like giving my stuff away practically like pricing wise, right? I do have a value of accessibility, but I think I've taken it too far. And I've consistently um, like in wanting to be generous, right? From a very pure mm. impulse, I have, I've been giving 
it's not that I'm not receiving back, but like it is out of balance here. And so, you know, when I think of kind of this, like what's the era we're moving into, we're, mo we're moving into this Aquarius age and in human design, there's, you know, this, this big shift that's happening in 2027, where we're changing what the incarnation cross of the times is for like a few hundred years. And we're that's really, so, yeah. yeah. We're I heard a little bit about that, but it's interesting we'll have, because yeah. we're actually with, you know, according to that, we're moving more into an independent space, but with the age of Aquarius, I see it more as an interdependent space. So age of Aquarius from an Aquarius perspective yes, is yes. about embracing your uniqueness, your wisdom, what makes you inherently you mm -hmm. in the human sense, but also that connection mm -hmm. to the collective. So it's being you, but how can you take being you and help humanity? Ah, uh, yeah. So I guess my, my interpretation, which isn't, it's not negating this. I've just been thinking of the Aquarius age, like shifting from the guru to maybe personal wisdom and shifting from this uh, like hierarchy into we have we are part of a collective. You know what this is making me think of? There's uh, there's um it's not even a myth. Maybe it's a mythology. There's a story about uh, Magdalene, right? And uh, the Cathar. Was it the Cathars? Maybe it was the Cathars. There was this big group of of people who were, you know, they were followers, they were Magdalene's, right? Um, monks. And as the Crusaders were like coming in to, to basically burn them all down, uh, like there was a myth that emerged and it was that Mary Magdalene, right, would be coming down now in these times, would be returning, but not as one, as many. Oh, and so that imagery for chills. me- Right. That totally. imagery for me is like looking at a diamond. What makes a diamond beautiful? It's all of the facets. Right. It's all of these little angles and these different parts. And I see each and every one of us as a face, as a little facet of this beautiful diamond. But if we're not really living our potential and being our true selves, our the little face, that little shape, it's going to be dull. And it's going to impact the whole. So I kind of see, I don't know, does that make sense? Like, visually? yeah, it does. I just feel like we're, we're here at this time in history with everything that's going on to really step into our true selves. Maybe that's what you're speaking mm -hmm. into. It's like really shining our uniqueness because that's what makes the whole beautiful and healthy and shining and together. So like, um, it makes so much sense. And I think that we like to, as human beings, trying to simplify the energies and the cosmos and what all happens. Cause like, you know, there's cycle nine and Chinese numerology and all this, like it's all happening at the same time, but mm -hmm. there's so many levels and there's so much, um, going on and there's so many ways to interpret it, which are all correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, I remember when I first met my Baba Lau and he was like, there's things that just were like, oh yeah. Like I met him and I, he was like, I've been waiting for you for so long. And I'm like, I know I'm here now. Right. Mm -hmm. And just this um, beautiful, like everything coming together and understand like on a, you know, I always talk about the deep core level knowings, but like those soul contracts, those those like, oh, I've known you. I've known you outside of this life and in these dimensions and for a very, very long time. Yeah. And that understanding that, oh, I'm here to do some shit. I'm here to shake shit up. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think it's such like we as when we're talking about like the coaching industry and like the creation of the success codex. It really is, I envision it like our own, like we have our chakra system mm -hmm. and then Pachamama has her chakra system and then the galaxy has its chakra system and the universe has, you know, like it goes out and out and out. It's an infinite. And within those little chakra systems, it's, I, I like, it just looks like a big web. Right. Mm -hmm. And so 
Like I'm part of DX's web. He gathered me and I'm part of that web, but also I have my own web. And this is where I really like the 13 warriors. When we talk about that and that the 13 warriors, they're already there. I'm just waiting for them. Yeah. Right. Like whenever they're like, okay, it's me. I'm one of them. I'm I'm not scared anymore. I'm going to tell you, but also like, there's no, there's, it's not like I'm more important than that. they have their webs too. Right. Like we yes. all have these webs and then they shoot off. And this is why I say a typhoon of fucking transformation, not a ripple because when we begin to gather in that way, we move from a clan into a tribe, right? Mm. And then it's like big and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So I get it. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. And kind of like, I guess to pull it back to Black Friday, <laughs> <laughs> like to bring it all full just circle bring it back. here, right? Like there's, um, I guess what's coming up for me is like, you know, we get to serve people. This is how we start the typhoon. We get to start the ripple and it doesn't have to be icky and it doesn't have to be manipulative. And it can be, I mean, when I started to shift my idea of my offers as being like something about me, I'm offering it, you know, pay me into like, oh no, this is like, I'm giving something of value. This is for you. For you, I think as entrepreneurs, we get super stuck in making it about us because partially it's because of all that marketing, right? And, and that's what makes sell sticky is because you're yes. thinking it's about your in your financial gain where it's mm -hmm. really about helping other people transform. I tell people this all the time. I, I, you can say no. I don't care. It's not saying no to me. It's not saying no to my income because I'm still going to be making money. Yeah. It's saying no to your transformation. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. I love that perspective. I love that perspective. And, you know, it, it also, it clears the ick. And it clears People, your ick around what you're pricing things. So pricing thing and also the value thing, right? Because I think that some, sometimes it's about like, it's about the money, but I think for a lot of us, I think I'm, I think I'm past that now, but there was a long time where it was like, it was proving my worth when someone said yes. So it was still about me, mm -hmm. still about my ego. Even though I wasn't conscious of it, that was running, you know, underneath the surface. And think about, we've been taught that since birth. Like when the minute you said that, I was like, oh, I used to prove myself through sex. Oh, me too. Yeah. I think a lot of women have like, oh, because I, you know, like this means I'm worthy because I'm so like, and I'm really good in bed and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, and then we just translate that into making a sale. Like, oh, when somebody says yes to me, then mm -hmm. that means I'm worthy. And that Ooh. means that I'm good. Ooh. Right. I, okay. <laughs> a little right? mind, mind blown moment. Yeah. Oh, I've never. And I used to, you know, I used to struggle with the difference between value and price. Like, how could I ever say that this is a 5,000 or 18,000 or $25,000 value? But once I realized the concept of, oh, I'm, it's about the transformation. It's also incorporates like, what do people, what have people paid me for my hypnosis? Like they pay me good ch change. Right. Yeah. And I've had one-on-one -on -one clients who have paid me good change to, um, experience the same thing. And I'm like, Oh, okay. But on a one-on-one -on -one level and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, we were talking about one-on-ones before mm -hmm. and how, like, I, I won't, I do, I don't do masterminds anymore. And the only reason that like, I'm going to be, I'm like looking, which ones am I going to do with you? Like, which ones do are aligned with what I need? And you're going to help me figure that out. But for Black Friday, but I do things for fun now. Yeah. Right. Like I'm in like a astrology monthly membership mm -hmm. and I'm like, I just, she gives weekly updates on the energy and whatever. And mm -hmm. I'm like, that's fun, but I can also utilize it. And yes between what she has given me weekly and the information that you have given me in the reading, it's like, oh, 
I understand Venus now. Mm -hmm. I understand how people perceive me. I understand how I can tap into that energy and really mark it differently based on who I want to attract. And we don't want fucking needy people. No, no. And that's exactly it. I was just going to say the word need was coming up, right? Like you're not buying because you need it. Nobody's convincing you you need it. You're buying because you want it. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's like, yeah, it's a big, not out of desperation, of, yes. not out of a missing piece. Right. I feel because you want somebody to save you, no. right? Like, no, oh. it's fun. It's more about, oh, listen, but for chiching, we're having like breakthroughs, like nobody's, it is 100%. Like I do it for fun, but I also know the value that is I'm receiving from it. And the value I'm receiving is not because I want to make more money. It's because I want to help more people. I want to reach more people. I want to transform more lives. I want to be able to give people the transformation. So when I view like the package that you, you have a few packages, but there's one that has like chat GPT. Yeah. I want to learn how to use that. Cause that sounds really fun. It's so fun. Yeah. Right. But I also <laughs> want to take that Venus energy and that compassion. And I want to like hundred times it so that I can really speak to the people that really need to hear what I have to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And not There's, the ones that are like, yeah, you're just not really, I don't really need, I thought I needed a, blah, blah, blah. I don't want wishy-washy. No, no. There's something else that's coming through here. I lost it. <laughs> It'll come back. Maybe. Okay. Maybe on the next call. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this card really quick before we close Oh, yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you might come back to it. So this is a deck that I haven't used very often, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Do you know the Earth Warriors? I have that deck. I do. I love that one. That's um, Alana. Is that Alana Fairchild? Um yes. It is she's I love her decks. I yeah. got this for Christmas a few years ago and there was a time when I was like pulling from it a lot. I have we all have our favorite decks. Mm-hmm. And if you look behind me, there's lots of decks back there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My favorites are wrapped up, but um, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna pull from this one because it resonates. And I mutilate um she rests to create Nana Bukalu, Bukalu, something like that. She's a she's an African um grandmother and the creator of Earth. But I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just wanted to really like share some things that I read that I was like, oh, this is so like, I was like, she's, this resonated because it is things that I hear you say often. Mm. Um, and You don't say this often, but the first thing was, uh, and this is not verbatim y'all. Mm -hmm. I often could not put into words high energy. Okay. Like how people misinterpret high energy mm -hmm. and in a roundabout way, she talks about this in that highly stimulated is not necessarily high energy. Like mm -hmm. for me, high energy is like calm and peaceful and like just this smooth, clean and orderly, right? It's high vibration, but it's not static it's not yeah it's not stimulating like it's, yes mm -hmm. yeah and i was like oh yeah okay it's not stimulating um give generously to yourself to be able to give generously to others mm -hmm. but there was something in here let's see if i can find it um maybe i won't be able to you have you have unusual ideas or ways of being that suit you but may not suit others. Mm. I thought about you because it goes on to say something like what, um, what works best for you, uh, like finding what works best for you without conformity. 
Mm. And I was like, that is so on car road. Cause that's <laughs> what you do with the success codex. It's like, you know, you got to find out what works best in alignment for you and your blueprint, your success codex. That's, that's it. I just, and listen, it's like, it's the lesson that, that keeps on lessening for me. You know, it's like, just when I think I'm like, I've cleared it all away. I hit another layer of like, wow, I've been, I've been filtering everything through this lens. That's not me. What's There's underneath There's no that? such thing as clearing everything. Yeah, away. you can't, you can't. You can't. This physical brain doesn't want you to, because if it did, uh, then you would be always putting yourself into danger. Mm. It needs to remember things. Your subconscious needs to have a Rolodex of experiences so that it doesn't have to redefine. I often will say this, like it was shaped really shaped by experiences. So when you think of it in caveman times, it was like you saw your best friend be eaten by a bear. And so it had to identify that bear as danger in the future. If you didn't have, if your physical brain didn't have all these experiences and belief systems all shaped, then you would always have to redefine and put yourself in danger to figure out, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's just kind of like, you can't get rid of them. You can't blow up those memories. You just have to be able to understand that they're all opinions and most of them are not true. None of them are true. They're just based on a bunch of experiences that don't exist anymore. And yeah, the question I keep asking myself is like, what am I making up about this? Or like, what's the rule I've now given myself that doesn't have to be there? Because right? that's how it works for me. It's like these understated, like, this is how it is. This is the rule. You have to do this to get that. And then I'm like, says who? I used to have to... I used to do that all. So coming from corporate America, especially during the time in which I was, mm -hmm. uh, there was all this, you know, what to wear, worker be like black suits, white shirts, gray mm -hmm. skirts, black mm -hmm. shoes, boots, whatever. Like I worked in San Francisco. So it was very like worker be uniforms. Mm -hmm. We wore them all the time. And Getting out or like when I first started my business, I was carrying that through. I was carrying that corporate America mentality, which I wanted to escape so badly. So I was always just, I was like the white bookcase with the neon sign type person. Like if it was today, <laughs> yeah. that's what it would look like. And yeah. I would have very structured photographs and professional photographs and dress for the money that you want to make, not for the money you're making. And, mm -hmm. nah, nah, nah. and it was so out of alignment. Mm. And especially when I look at it and I go, huh? So uh, during the week I was, was a worker bee and I was conforming to what my um the corporations i work for wanted and then on the weekends i was like freaking in the castro like wigs and false eyelashes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. mini skirts and hot pants and like so it's i was hiding all my life and then i thought i needed to bring that through in my business mm. right because if not if like that's the whole thing like how much it's work to perform it's and I, perform. I really, I'm a performer. I'm a musician when but like, it's different when I'm performing yeah. my music, I'm not pretending. Right. I'm bringing an essence of myself out. And that's different. If you're like, oh no, that like, I know we, we, we're not fans of this phrase, but like, if really you are that boss babe, right. And that's how you identify, then yeah, if you're dressing like that, that's probably true for you. It's really just about like, are you doing it because you see her doing it and, and her doing it and they're successful. So that must mean that in order for you to be successful, you have to be perceived like that. So you have to get the suit and you have to do, you know, it's like, I was thinking when you texted me this morning that you were in your sweats and I was like, yeah, well, I'm in my running gear. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. But um, I started thinking about, I, I think her name's Tiffany Carter. She's a business manifestation coach or something. She's not a boss, babe. Mm -hmm. um, she's very straightforward. And I've seen her on TikTok. I think I might follow her or something, but I see her do lives and she lives well, like, but she says things like this, that I'm just like, true. Um, one thing that 
people that make a lot of money, like she's an eight figure earner. She's like, we hold on to shit. We don't buy things just because we want the new version. And I'm like, yeah, like I saw the same laptop from like 10 years ago and I still use it when I'm working downstairs. I blow through computer cameras like nobody's business because of my frequency. Mm. So I went to like little ones on top because it, I'll blow through them. Huh. Um whenever you see that like duh, 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 that yeah. goes across the bottom of my screen yeah. that's because i'm like all lit and i'm like Rrr. um but she will she like she has a pool she has a really nice house but she's like like people have commented like why don't you redo your kitchen she's like I, this kitchen works fine i don't need to redo it i don't care if those cabinets are 30 years old they still work mm -hmm. and i'm like see that like, I don't need a Bentley or a Porsche. I don't need, uh, like my view, my, my excitement is like going more off grid than on grid. And we recycle, like we just had a neighbor that put, that keeps their house immaculate from the outside. So I can only imagine the inside. They just put a rug out on the side of the road. And I was like, Let's grab that one. Yeah. And see if we can put it in our dining room, right? Like, I'm. I don't need to go out and buy a new one. I really, we really don't need one, but we can wrap the one up in the kitchen and give it to the, um, the neighbor that has twins and stuff and dogs, and they can play on it or whatever. But I'm like, it's not about the dollar signs, no. right? Like, it's about, like, I never think I've never thought for once when I make more money, we'll buy a bigger, better house mm -hmm. because I love our house mm -hmm. yeah. and it's 1200 square feet and it's rickety floors. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I totally know what you're saying. I I'm not, and there's nothing wrong. Like some people they're, you know, they're into name brands and that kind of thing. I just, it's never been in my, like, um, uh, it's like, I don't even perceive it it's, it's weird. I don't like, you know, like if someone has a really expensive bag, I don't notice it. I don't notice cars. I just don't notice those things, but I notice beautiful nature. So for me, that's what it is. Like the more money I have, the more I beautify my backyard. Right. And for me, the goal isn't like get out of my house now because we live like really close to the schools and and i like our house it's actually the house my husband grew up in since he was like one so there's oh my family God. history and his father built the whole top floor and it's really like yeah it's lovely here it's a we, we live in a great little town um but my dream is to have nature in my backyard you have Not a huge backyard my too and my neighbor and my neighbor and my neighbor and we have a big yard but like I love, I need nature sounds. It's loud. We live in, we're, we're in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, which is right outside of New York city. And it's, it's just very populated. And there's any time I go and I sit outside, I'm here in cars and I'm here in planes and I'm here in the neighbor's pool. And you know, I'm a, do you have, have you thought about putting arborvitae around the per that's perimeter? That's what we were just talking about. I want to at least put it on one side and we have a big, beautiful tree along the back. But that's what I was thinking. We just need a little bit of more privacy. Yeah. And then that will also buffer the noise. Some of the sounds. Yeah. I love me some nature. That's my wealth. My wealth is being able to like stick my feet on the ground. And right. It's not about the there. dollar sign. No. Okay. So I know that we have gone over, but one thing that I wanted to do for these is just us that doing, doing what we do this. So, um, I don't even care how long they are. So this will be one episode. So y'all, it could be 15 minutes next time. It could be 25. It could be an hour. We don't know. We just are flowing with them. Hope that you all have enjoyed this time spent with us and that, um, you got some great information. If you have any questions about formulating your own Black Friday offer, just reach out to us. Comment below on this podcast, um, on YouTube. Leave us a great review on um, iTunes because it improves our algorithms. Oh, and a good one, right? We want a good review because it improves our algorithms. So more people will see it and together all of us can transform more lives. So until next time, have a great week, y'all. Bye.